Andor is doing something different. It's not like Kenobi, it's not like Boba Fett, it's not like Mandalorian. I think it's definitely taken a little bit of inspiration from these, maybe Mando the most, but so far, Andor is completely different. The pacing, the politics, the small story and the small characters, and there's one other key thing that I think sets Andor so far apart, and I think Andor is really going to change the game for future Disney shows. This show is so different from everything that came before it, and I think this could really pave a new way for a whole different type of Star Wars content. Something that, as a Star Wars fan, I think we've needed for a long time. I'm so happy that we're getting a 12 episode long show. I'm so tired of waiting so long for these new shows, and they're only 6 episodes long, 45 minutes each, with 10 minutes of credits. Some of them feel like an over glorified stretched out movie rather than a show. Andor, with the 12 episodes, literally twice as long as Kenobi, feels like it's trying to be a show that we're going to be watching over the next 3 months. They're just going to be drip feeding us the rest of the episodes instead of the 3 episode drop, but still, I love looking Looking forward to watching Star Wars each week. I'm glad it's back and I'm glad it's twice as long as Kenobi. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. I've got another one coming out soon that you're not going to want to miss. Now, ever since they found that huge success block with Mandalorian Season 1, they've been trying to structure all of their content into episodic show format. Kenobi was originally supposed to be a movie, and Boba Fett was so close of a copycat to Mando that it ended up just stealing Mandalorian and used entire episodes for his side quests. If they really want the same type of success they found with Mando season 1, they need to do something completely different from the current mold. It's gotta stand out, and Andor feels like it's moving in the right direction. It's so nice to finally have a show that doesn't take place on Tatooine. Trust me, I love Tatooine just as much as the next Star Wars fan. I know how big of a role it plays in the big picture for Star Wars, but after two seasons of Mando, a season of Boba Fett, and a season of Kenobi, it's long past due for us to have a show use a different planet as its home base. There's so many planets in Star Wars, that's what it's about, a whole galaxy to explore. It almost feels like a crime to not explore explore all the planets. And Andor did just that. In the first three episodes, we were introduced to three completely different planets, each with a completely different feel, all the way down from the buildings and the environments, to the color schemes and the clothing people wear, to the background music and the soundtrack, which by the way sounded amazing. I'm just so happy with how it's looking so far. I personally loved Cassie and Andor as a character in Rogue One, so I'm extremely happy to see Diego Luna return and reprise his role, especially in his more adult slash dark past. Cause I'm really enjoying how unfiltered this show started off as, and I can only hope that they keep the same tone throughout all 12 episodes and they don't drop it for a Disney kid friendly vibe. I love that they showed the dark dirtier parts of these planets. I love that they showed the nightclub. I love that they weren't scared to show Cassie and taking out the second guard on purpose. We're going to get there. I'll tell them what happened. I'm so glad they had the little intimacy between Bix and Tim. This feels like a more realistic and grounded take on the Star Wars universe than anything we've seen in a very long time. And while these are all things I love about it that will hopefully continue to help mold the future Star Wars shows in the right direction, there are also some areas I would like to see them improve on as the show moves on. At first, I thought it was really bold that they were dropping the first three episodes on the very first week. Just all at once, boom, here's 25% of the show. But then you watch it and you realize just why they needed to release all three episodes at once, and it almost seems like they'll be following a pattern from here on out. It's because nothing happens in the first two episodes. Besides the first seven minutes where Cassian obliterates the one guy's face, not really anything happens in terms of story. We see Cassian run back and forth a bunch and then he's just waiting around for two episodes, waiting for episode three. And episode three was amazing. Still grounded, mature, but with the right amount of action. It was so nice to finally get some action. I don't need action nonstop, but if I rewatch any of Andor, it's going to be episode three and episode six. And just the same, four and five was slow like one and two. We're we're going to have to wait for episode 6 before anything exciting happens again. At this point, I'm curious why they didn't just double the length of the episodes, or even triple it, and release 6 hour and 10 minute episodes. Because right now it feels like we're just being strung along waiting for each third episode for something to happen, and the two in-betweens are just filler. I don't know why they do that other than to stretch out the show so we're watching it for 10 weeks instead of 5. The shorter the episodes and longer the release time, the longer it feels like we're getting Star Wars content, but it's almost like they've structured each three episodes to be their own hour and a half mini movie. There's no arcs to each episode, each one is not its own story. Each one is a tiny part of a bigger three part conclusion. It's just the way they're structuring it. I'm here for the extra content and the three to four mini movies we'll get out of the show. I think I'm just not a fan of how they're breaking it up each week. After the end of the episode, I don't go, ooh, I wonder what will happen next. I just go, well, that's the end of that episode. Even if you look back at Mando, there was story progression, exciting moments, and usually a little arc each 
each episode and it never felt rushed and they were similar to the runtime of the Andor episodes. I don't know, tell me in the comments, do you think it's more important to have more episodes or to have less of them but longer episodes that feel more complete? I know I would sit through hour, hour and a half long Star Wars episodes. It'd just be nice if it felt like more happened in them, but still. I think this could be confined to a structuring issue because so far the rest of the show is amazing. I love that it's a little more mature and I love seeing the parts of Star Wars that we've never seen before, but I would love to see a little more in terms of story progression happening in these episodes. I'm actually watching Daredevil for the first time right now and going through the episodes, I am shocked each time with how much they fit in each episode. And watching an episode of Andor in the same day just makes me shake my head and think they could do so much better. I know it's a new show and they're just starting out, so I'm giving them some leeway, but it's just I feel like it needs a little more action. They definitely intended all of the first three episodes to be watched together. The first two episodes are so slow. If you zoom out and look at the big picture, this entire series is being propelled forwards by the fact that Cassian kills two people, which in the Star Wars universe is nothing. People literally die all the time. Look at the multiple planets that have been blown up, all the billions of lives that were lost. Look at Clone Wars, so many deaths, even civilians. I know that this will evolve into something bigger, leading Cassian into joining the rebellion and eventually igniting the events of their original trilogy, but Right now, there's just not too much pushing the story forward. Even the lead officer just tries to sweep it under the rug, which is probably what should have happened. I mean this in the best way possible, but honestly, the story is the most lacking thing so far. The worlds, the environments, the sounds, the characters, the droids, the music. Have you seen Mon Mothma's fit? This is so cool. Or even Cassian's poncho. As soon as I saw it on screen, I wanted it. Even the clothes are amazing. Everything else was great. And when you're in the middle of everything, you don't really notice it too much. But when you step back, everything has been set in motion because two random guards die. And it was partially warranted by self-defense. They were dirty and trying to mug him. Cassian defended himself. Two guards dying is what will literally snowball into the rebels blowing up the Death Star in five years. Crazy. These two guards were more important in the grand scheme of things than anyone in the Star Wars universe will ever realize. I think I would just like to see Andor influence the future live action Star Wars shows with the level of maturity and realness it holds. We finally get a look at live action Coruscant for the first time in 17 years. We're getting a close up look at the inside of the Imperial Security Bureau. All of the sets look incredible. This show feels so grounded and gritty and realistic. It's not something we get to see too often in Star Wars. The intimacy between Bix and Tim, it felt like I was watching normal TV and not some Disney-fied spin-off of Star Wars. And I love how much time they're spending on Cyril, especially after he gets discharged and goes home to see his mother. I want to see more droids like the one we've seen so far. Same with the aliens, so far they look incredible. A plus on making all of these planets feel so alive and unique. But not only that, Andor is reflecting stories that have happened in real life. Even the architecture on Coruscant is heavily inspired by the brutalistic style that emerged in Europe after the war. And episode 4 alone went so hard with the easter eggs, showing us that Luthen was an art collector slash trader really let them put pieces in this show from every piece of Star Wars they wanted to. I don't want to consider it fan service because some of the stuff here is so obsolete and hidden in the background that most of the average viewers wouldn't notice it. It's not up in your face. Let alone some people don't know what this stuff is. I mean, look at this. This tiny thing in the background is Plo Koon's face mask. Apparently someone went sifting through the wreckage after he was gunned down during Order 66 and this indestructible thing survived. Also, the shield the Gungans used in the Battle of Naboo from Phantom Menace? It's powered down, but you can still tell that's definitely what it is. This is so cool. The piece from Rebels is here. There's a Mandalorian chest plate here. Possibly Jango's? Who knows? There's a Jedi and a Sith holocron in the back. There's even a small block of frozen carbonite with an Indiana Jones whip sitting here. Not only is Lutheran a fan of the Star Wars movies, but also is multiverse hopping over to Indiana Jones's side of the world. And I think my favorite bit in here is this Starkiller suit from The Force Unleashed. I mean, to me, it looks pretty spot on, but maybe it's just a Starkiller inspired armor as a head nod to the games, because last time I checked, Starkiller was way too OP to actually bring him into canon. I think they tried to bring him into Rebels, and they just couldn't realistically work him in anywhere. He's too powerful. What are you going to do against a dude that can bring down Star Destroyers? As much as I want this to be a little secret note telling us Blur Animation Studios is working on a Starkiller series, I'm just afraid that's probably not the case. So I'm trying to keep my hopes low because that would be the best thing for Disney to ever greenlight. But still, it was so cool to see all these items in the shop. And I absolutely love how terrifying they made the TIE Fighters, especially in Episode 5. They set out on a mission while making this series to show how truly terrifying it would be to hear that iconic screech if you're an average rebel trying to lay low and not be noticed. 
I mean, I could always imagine it, but this episode just gave it to us. I love that so much. They teased it in four, but episode five, when it comes down through the valley, was incredible. One of the coolest TIE Fighter shots I've ever seen. Props to whoever pushed for this idea because this was so freaking cool. And the Star Wars car, the elegant speeder we saw Mon Mothma in, that was pretty sweet. I feel like that's pretty new for how many speeders we've seen, even on Coruscant. That looked like the Rolls Royce of speeders. I'm really enjoying the look at Coruscant, especially the upper class Coruscant it's one of the one places in the galaxy that isn't so dystopian. It's almost closer to a utopia, or as close as it's going to look in Star Wars. It feels futuristic in a pristine way, not like it's going to fall apart like the rest of the galaxy. I'm curious what you guys think so far. I've loved the look of the show, and I just think it could use a little more of a push on the story side of the things. I'm really enjoying the series, especially how grounded it feels, the locations they use for shooting, the aliens, the droids, the bits of action. I just hope with the other 70% of the show, they can keep the pacing up and give us more episodes that we're going to run back to rewatch immediately. When they're doing a good job with it, it's so good. But when it's slow, they take their time with things. Tell me what you think of the show so far. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'll be back soon with another one. Make sure you're subscribed. But until then, I will see you in the comments. And remember, the Force will be with you always.